have self-control, be married, image me, reflect me to the creation, enjoy my blessings, and then life to enjoy God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being or a living soul, depending on your translation. God has given us his image to reflect creation, marriage in which to reproduce godly offspring, self-rule to reflect God to the creation, food to eat, and life in him. And what do we do with sin? We ruin it. We take these five things that God has given to us, and instead of being image bearers as parents, we become abusive parents. We become sinful parents. Instead of reflecting God to our children and loving our children, we abuse our children. And this is why we have the foster care system today. Because parents get trapped in sin. Many of them have been abused themselves. They are addicts. They are different substances that control their lives. Instead of having God controlling them, they are controlled by these addictions. And the sin ruins it and destroys it. Instead of having marriage and, and children being raised with a father and a mother, they're raised with an unwed single mother who, who created this child out of the context of marriage. Instead of having self-rule, we end up with corrupt governments that, that enforce only one child per family, that hate children, that force abortion. We end up with societies that don't accept children, societies that don't like children. I mean, this should sound familiar. This is America, okay? How many of you got pregnant with your fourth kid and everybody was like, surely you know what birth control is, right? Come on, Christians, we don't even like kids. It's a sin. God likes children. He loves kids, and yet even in churches, we like snicker when people have more than two. We've got to get over this. Sorry, this, I'm repeating the message from earlier in the summer. All right? Instead of food and the blessings that we have, what does sin bring? Hunger and poverty. And around the world, how many places don't even have enough food to feed their children? What's it a result of? It's a result of re rejecting God's design for the way the world's supposed to work. And instead of life, we have death. We have examples of this throughout the scripture. Joash and Ishmael were both abused by their parents. Joash's grandmother tried to kill him. You can read the story in 2 Kings chapter 11. Ishmael was Abraham. Remember, Abraham didn't want to have a kid with Sarah, so he decided to go have a kid with the servant girl, and then basically he kicked Ishmael out later. Ishmael was kind of the, the ugly stepson that nobody liked because of abusive parents. You have Jephthah. He was illegitimate. He was the son of a harlot. You have Moses, who the government said you have to kill all the firstborn children, so they put him in the river, they let him go. Ruth, not technically an orphan, but she was a widow due to hunger and due to poverty, due to the death of her husband. Lot and Esther, both orphans. Lot through death, Esther we assume by death. Did you know that the Bible is filled with stories of adoption? But you didn't know that. I didn't know that until I started studying it. And I was like, man, where have I been all this time? Where do we see this today? In the U.S., we see a lot of the abusive parents. We see the need for the foster care system. We see the 118,000 kids who are available for adoption. And the Christians who all sit back and say, well, I reckon somebody else will do that. Not in this church. In this church, we're going to step up and take care of them. Okay, illegitimate children, a lot of that in the U.S., a lot of that in Korea as well. I just picked some of the hot topics in some of the countries that are very adoptable right now. Um, in China, because of the one-child rule, um, most of them want to have a boy. And so a lot of the girls are available for adoption. Except now China's become so popular, there's a seven-year waiting list, unless you go for the WIC, which is the, the waiting children. And there's a ton of kids in China that have medically correctable issues, and you can get them very quickly. It, it, it's, <coughs> come on, guys, we've got to love these people. We've got to step up. Same thing in Korea. Uh, poverty is huge in Ethiopia and Russia. The AIDS epidemic is killing everybody, and we just we turn a blind eye to it. Well, that's overseas. At least it's not happening here. It needs to have, Guys, we've got to love these kids. It's available. Uh, same thing with a lot of the death. You're going to have a lot of you know, genuine orphans from Ethiopia and other just picking countries here. This is what's going on. Our world is messed up because of sin. No, there shouldn't be any orphans. I mean, if we, were, we shouldn't need a foster care system. And we can sit around and talk about it. Well, that shouldn't exist. Those parents shouldn't be bad. I agree they shouldn't be bad. But you know what? They are because we live in a sinful world. And you know what? I'm bad too. But because of Jesus Christ... Jesus came in to rectify a messed up world. And he pays for our adoption by rescuing us as orphans. What does he say in John 14, 18? I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. He came to secure our adoption. Notice Galatians 4, 4 through 7. God sent forth his son to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive heaven. No. It's not about heaven. It's not about taking poor little kids and bringing them into our nice little houses. No, 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 no. Adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba's daddy. 
the God of the universe, through the death of his son, Jesus Christ, is our daddy. When our life is overwhelmed, we climb into the lap of the God of the universe and say, Daddy, see, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Some of us are waiting for our parents to die so we can inherit, you know, $1,000. When God comes back, we inherit the world. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are adopted by the king of the universe. Adoption is the most natural thing in God's eyes. And it needs to be in ours. And then Jesus came to redeem all people. 1 John 2.2 2 says this, He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. One of the things that happens in churches that I despise, and I did it too when I was older, it's the legalism. We have a good, clean, perfect church. Let's not mess it up. Oh, that, that's all those sinful people out there, all those messed up, you know, they're just going to have to deal with their messed up. I don't, you know, not in here. If we start fostering these kids, they're going to come out. You know, Robert, they're coming out of the school system. No discipline. They're, they're going to run all over this church. They'll probably get our girls pregnant in the youth group. And mom, shut up. Okay? Jesus was the propitiation not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. And it's not just us who have the grace of God. We've been called to share the grace of God with the world. I love Revelation 5, 9 through 10. They sang a new song. This is all the redeemed in heaven. And they sang this, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you are slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. And I've shared with you before that I am racist against white people. <laughs> that my last church was an all-Korean church. There were only ten Caucasians and an 800-member Korean church. One of the things that I don't like about this church is that it's too white. Um, by the way, Calvert County is 11% African American. By the way, our church is about 3% African American. Okay? When we are in heaven... Everyone will be from every nation, tribe, and tongue. So if we want a little taste of heaven, we would do well to work in our church to get more African American and more Asian people in our church, okay? So I'm just publicly from the pulpit saying we need more black people in our church. The music would be a lot better, okay? And the love would be a lot better, and we'd have a better understanding of what heaven is, okay? So look around this morning. If you see too many white people, go... Invite your neighbors, but especially if they're of another race, because that's what this church is about. And if you have any bit of racism, I'm sorry, but it's not welcome here. And I just need to make that especially clear. I'm pretty nice about a lot of things, okay? This one we're not going to talk about. It's just done, okay? So th that's the heartbeat of God. And I wanted to, wanted to share that, because that's what we're about, and that's what heaven's about. So what do we do? 